Okay, recording. Check one, two, check one, two. That's a cool Toyota with a snorkel on it right there. All right, I've been watching this, um, this interview that took place on a show called Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells. And if you're not familiar with the show, John interviews a lot of um, a lot of people that are trying to uncover corruption, people that have interesting stories, uh, a lot of other uh, media type channels won't even talk about. He interviewed this lady, uh, she went by the name DJ, that's not her name, but she wanted to keep her anonymity. and. Um, she knew a lot about art artificial intelligence. She uh, works with computer systems. She's clearly a very intelligent lady. She's done a lot of research. And um, she talks about Jade Helm, Jade and Jade 2 artificial intelligence. And it's like a two hour and 15 minute interview, but it's um, it's a really good interview. And basically the Jade 2 artificial intelligence is what is being used as the foundation for targeted individual programs. It's a, um, it's a way that quote, threat assessment of terrorists can be carried out without human interaction. Basically, the artificial intelligence is programmed to identify and attack certain threats. But here's, here's the kicker. When it was programmed, it was prog programmed by deep state individuals, basically, cabal. People that view patriots and uh, free thinkers, basically anybody that doesn't go along with the globalist new world order agenda, people that won't just obey and go along with orders, mindless arbitrary orders, uh, people that would stand up and fight for their freedom if they had to, not because they want to, but if they have to. Um, so it seems like those type of people got targeted. People that uh, maybe had information about corruption that could be uncovered, uh, victims of child trafficking or other types of trafficking uh, would be targeted to uh, keep them silent. And this artificial intelligence basically controls everything. It works on a global network. Uh, as you know, after 9-11 took place, the Patriot Act was enacted, took away everyone's rights to privacy. All data from everywhere, from the cell phone that I'm speaking into right now, your computer, smart TVs, smart refrigerators, smart anything with the word smart in front of it, your smart meter, uh, everything is being listened to, being monitored, and all of that data is going into a supercomputer. And what DJ, uh, how DJ explained it was, this isn't your run of the mill supercomputer. And then she said some words I didn't know, <laughs> talking about computers. Um, but she basically said this is an amazing computer and can process more information that a lot of people even realize is possible. So all of the information pretty much everywhere on the globe is dumped into this, uh, into these mass data gathering facilities. And the artificial intelligence deciphers that information and disseminates orders basically to state actors, uh, a lot of the people that uh, do the auto mobbing, the driving, the people we call gang stalkers, uh, for 
quote, community policing. Obama called this 21st century policing. Uh, some people call it community policing. Uh, we call it gang stalking or organized stalking and harassment because the, uh, the cover story is that these programs are meant to keep society safe and use predictive programming, predictive learning, uh, sorry, computer learning and predictive programming to identify where a target is going to be, what their next decision in life is going to be, um, to try to guide them in a certain direction. It's social engineering. It basically tries to, well, it does in some cases, unless you really focus on uh, how the AI is working and interfering in your life, will manipulate and manage people into making decisions they wouldn't otherwise, into creating uh, situations chaos, fear, uh, in some instances, uh, death. Uh, once a person is targeted for death by this artificial intelligence, it's pretty good at it. And uh, like Dr. Robert Duncan explains in uh, Intelligent Systems of Control, one of the uh, speeches that he did, there's uh, part one and two, you can look those up on YouTube, how this artificial intelligence use, uses what's called hyper game theory and puts the target through a series of hoops basically that they have to jump through measures and countermeasures um, that keep them constantly on the run putting out fires not literally sometimes um, but trying to uh, recuperate from the covert and overt attacks that the artificial intelligence is strategizing to interfere in the target's life. Uh, so it'll be the, these really complex, multi-level, overt, well, co covert to the public around the target and over to the target because it's so personalized you can tell basically with the signaling and then the, the standard operating procedures the types of events that you experience over the years you start to understand uh, what are organic events and what are uh, natural or are contrived events so you're, you're constantly trying to play catch up and uh, work through life and recover from these different attacks. And these attacks will be uh, financial, uh, physical, psychological. Uh, they'll be time consuming, things that will just take up your time, uh, irritate you, agitate you. And they'll do this over and over and over and over until you, even if you are a, a very strong-willed person, and you are persistent, you're a fighter, no matter how strong-willed you are, eventually you're gonna get tired from constantly going. It's like a marathon that never ends in your life. Um, and watching this, this interview on Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wills, after all of the experience that I have going through this personally of being a targeted individual and researching, documenting, reporting, networking with intel, whistleblowers, other targeted individuals, which some of those are uh, intel whistleblowers, other journalists, just all of the conglomeration of the, the events that I've gone through, experienced, witnessed, um, and I listened to this interview about how this artificial intelligence works, this Jade 2, it completely puts all of it together. It is literally the foundation of this whole thing. There are different compartmentalized parts of the targeted individual program, but basically the base of it is 
this supercomputer running the artificial intelligence called Jade 2 that processes and manages all of the information from the mass data gathering centers, the uh, 78 fusion centers that are here in the United States, the compartmentalized groups like FBI InfraGuard, Citizen Corps, FBI Secret Surveillance Group, um, even homeowners associations, a lot of different compartmentalized groups that are paid to facilitate in the organized stalking and harassment of a targeted individual. And it does include police departments, fire departments, EMS, um, private aircraft groups, helicopter pilots. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on how many different people are taking part in these programs. Um, but it, if you if you are a targeted individual, if you aren't a targeted individual, this AI is most likely affecting your life in some fashion. Even if you don't notice it, uh, there are people on the road every single day that are drivers in uh, uh, in these programs. They're taking up space on the road when they don't even need to be there. There's a higher likelihood of accidents. And uh, death and injury while you're driving on the road and it might not even have anything to do with you but the people that are around you. Uh, FedEx takes part in this, UPS, the United States Postal Service. Um, it goes on and on and on and a lot of a lot of the folks that are that are taking part in these programs I don't necessarily think that they're evil people. They are they're tricked into taking part in these programs because they're approached by somebody say with a nice suit, a badge that says CIA, FBI, Department of Homeland Security, whatever the, the situation is. And they, they always have a, like a patriotic, let's go get them, protect our country kind of speech. And the way it's presented to whoever um, is going to take part in these programs, you know, they'll be told something like we've got an issue of national security we have terrorists among us pedophiles bank robbers uh, career criminals blah 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 you know whatever the slander campaign is that they're going to use against that targeted individual they'll they'll tell these people whatever they need to tell them that will get a visceral reaction from the group that they are approaching and get their attention. The problem, reaction, solution paradigm. So there's the problem. They tell the people, hey, we've got bad guy, bad guy exhibit A in this area where they'll be on the road while you're driving. And we need you to help keep an eye on them. Follow this GPS on your phone uh, make yourself known as you go by the target just by doing a little hand signal do this I do this all the time uh, mess with my beard but uh, do something that, that has easy pl plausible deniability so if somebody says that person was signaling to me you know, all the person that has to do that takes part in the program is say, oh, I, I had an itch right here. Um, so, but basically I think these people are told that they're doing this for national security and the people don't all know that what they're doing is taking part in a Stasi type program, a program that, uh, is very similar to what uh, the Hitler used in Nazi Germany with the brown shirts. If you're not familiar with that, look that up. Um, the communist East Germany Stasi police, secret police, um, the Nazi SS, how uh, they did similar uh, things like this in the Soviet Union. Um, all communist or socialist countries took part in these types of activities and now 
this is what's happening now. And I'll, I'll give you the, the rundown again. I know I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but this is just all off the top of my head. Um, no notes just from my experience and my, my research. So 9-11, FF attack. Hopefully you know what FF is. A non-organic event to cause fear and reaction. So 9-11 uh, FF, Patriot Act. One of the main authors was Joe Biden. Um, creation of Department of Homeland Security when it was created. A, former East Germany Stasi secret police officer, one of the the, um, the main guys, one of the directors of the Stasi police, uh, Marcus Wolf, was consulted. And then I can never remember the guy's name from the Soviet Union, but they were both in the same type of secret police and psychological torture, psychological operation um, directors. They were consulted while the Department of Homeland Security was created. Uh, Department of Homeland Security, after that, uh, fusion centers were created. Uh, fusion centers disseminate information to all of these compartmentalized groups that I was just speaking about. Um, and I, I just explained who a lot of the compartmentalized groups are. Uh, a lot of these people, and at this, I'm speaking to you folks that work in these groups. If you feel like you've been doing something amazing for your country, you feel like you're part of the team, you're compensated, you know, you get a car, uh, your rent is paid, you get gift cards. Uh, that's filtered through w William Patrick Cox, uh, which is a non-specific uh, business, a non-designated business uh, based in Florida. Uh, which is connected to Lockheed Martin, whose CEO stepped down recently. Uh, one of the like 12,000 CEOs that have stepped down in the last few years. Um, and Jade 2, this artificial intelligence that has no moral compass, it has no empathy, and it has no regrets, is running all of this. And the people that you are attacking through this psychological torture program, this no-touch torture, slow-kill program are not terrorists. Actual terrorists were taken off of the Department of Homeland Security watch lists. And good American people that are fighting for your uh, almost, almost cursed, <laughs> almost cussed there. This is, I get, I get passionate about this. They're fighting, they're fighting for your fucking freedom. Okay. They're fighting to give people information. They have endured torture that you could not even begin to imagine for years and years and years. And those are the type of people that are being targeted. Meanwhile, people that hate our country, people that are actually terrorists that want to cause chaos and destruction in our country, are being rewarded. And how do we know this? Former Department of Homeland Security officer, Philip Haney. Philip Haney went on the same show I was just talking about, Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells. I've been on the same show. General Flynn has been on this show. Philip Haney went on the show and said, hey, I noticed through my investigations that it seems like there's a lot of decent people on these watch lists, but actual terrorists are running free. And not only are they running free, they were inserted into positions of authority in intel groups, into private security. And that's one of the parts I forgot to talk about. Private security groups. Let me finish with Philip Haney. Philip Haney did two interviews on Caravan to Midnight. He did some interviews on some other shows, but the, the two on Caravan to Midnight are the most important. 
in, in my humble, sorry, I just got a little distracted. Ice cream man's driving by right now. Um, my humble opinion. So after Philip Haney came out with that information and he went public with it, he was found dead standing next to his car. He was shot in the chest, I don't know how many times, and initially they ruled, this, uh, ruled it a suicide. Just like the kid that made the movie Grey State, his whole family, the dog, were dead at the house, ruled a suicide. You know, all these people get shot in the back of the head twice, they rule it a suicide. Well, that happened to Philip Haney. And he explained exactly what I'm explaining and what he was talking about links to all of this. So I'll end it with, with this. One of the compartmentalized groups, one of the entities that takes part in running these, these programs are private security into uh, private security corporations basically DOD contractors uh, Department of Justice not sure really who they fall under CIA uh, well CIA falls under D D O let's see D D O J yeah I believe so shit I don't know you tell me uh, they're one of the 17 intel agencies that uh, we have here in the United States. So anyway, these these private security groups, um, that's their cover story. They say, we're a private security group, but they're carrying out a lot of this organized stalking and harassment, gang stalking. A guy named Brian Heffron uh, worked for them. Brian Coffron, sorry. K-O-F-R-O-N, Brian Coffron. He worked for one of these security groups called SIC or SIS. Uh, just do a little Googling on that. Duck, duck, go, whatever. Look for Brian Coffrin. And uh, he worked for these groups and he worked his way up. And he realized how psychopathic these, these programs were and what they were doing to our country and to our people and how much it was violating their rights, how sick and disgusting these programs are. He said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm going to give my life up. You're basically committing suicide if you if you work for one of those groups, and you um, you blow the whistle on them uh, because you 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 get targeted and you end up going through what I've gone through. I'm not even a whistleblower. I I've never talked about one classified thing that I know. Uh, just talked about what I've experienced. So anyway, that guy blew the whistle. He explained all of it. Look for his interview. He explains a lot of what the private security companies do. Um, and how they take part in this whole thing. It's, it's a huge, huge business. And the global industrial military complex loves it. Because if my calculations are right, and I'm not a mathematician or an actuary, statistician, whatever, but I'm all right if I take my shoes off. If 1.5 million people in the United States are targeted individuals and have been put into this program, that's $3 trillion a year that's being put into an unconstitutional, slow kill no touch torture psychological takedown program that has cost the lives of I'd say around 140 150 thousand veterans um, who knows how many civilians journalists whistleblowers uh, people that were just easily isolated and could be thrown on the list to take up a space empty node you know, they need to put somebody in there to make sure that they keep generating that revenue revenue through these compartmentalized groups. And then everybody that's taking part in all of this just keeps making their money. They keep, get, they keep getting their house paid. They keep, keep their cars, keep their salary, their gift cards. 
their big federally funded building and you the taxpayers that get thrown in prison if you don't pay your taxes are paying for this and you've never voted for it and you wouldn't if you knew what was taking part if you knew what it involved unless you were complicit and you were working for one of these groups and you wanted job security all of this is completely unconstitutional it violates I don't know how many federal uh, US federal codes here I'll just name three off the top of my head US code 18 section 241 uh, 242 deprivation of rights under color of law let me see if I get this one right 2260 stalking which by the way I might have got that wrong uh, 2261 2260 something like that but it's stalking um, all of that being said a lot of people might say wow you have a good imagination how'd you come up with all of this stuff well there's some verification if you'd like to go check it out for yourself if you'd like to do a little de a little research instead of just gaslighting people and uh, saying ah you're crazy because you won't be able to do that much longer you won't be able to just gaslight and tell people they're crazy because this is actually being uncovered. Uh, seven executives at eBay were recently arrested. A few months ago, they were arrested for organized stalking and harassment, gang stalking. Uh, there's an update now. Their court situation, four of them are pleading guilty to gang stalking. Um, in these programs... Uh, police departments and civilians that take part in these programs they use fake license plates to communicate with the targeted individuals and the targeted individual tries to say there's all these people driving around with these license plates like with my daughter's name or uh, the thing the last thing I just said when I was when I was in my house and uh, they use all kinds of different fake license plates to to mess with you psychologically basically let you know that you're being surveilled 24 hours a day, seven days a week. People say, no way. Who would go through the trouble to do that? Well, in Goodyear, Arizona, one town over from where I live, not even a 10-minute drive from here, the police chief and a few other officers were removed or were forced to resign and or demoted because they were using fake license plates in community policing or 21st century policing like Obama called it. Okay. Um, what was the other recent proof? Ah, geez. There was three of them recently that were, that were really good proof uh, that back up what targeted individuals are saying. I can't think of the third one off the top of my head right now. Um... Just go watch. Just go watch this interview. I'll put the link. Um, I describe this whole thing. Now, I I didn't even get into. I don't want to go off on another tangent here, but there's other parts of this that sound like it's out of a science fiction movie. Okay, but it's part of the torture. It's part of the no touch torture that, when the targeted individual explains experiencing these certain things, um, they to an uneducated person, which a lot of people would not get educated in these types of things because there's no need to ever go look into um, certain technologies if you're not in that field or if you're not experiencing it and trying to figure it out. Um, just look up these things if you're doing research on this, which you should. A lot of people do deep dives and they research things that people are talking about, verify the information, fact check it, and um, try to prove it wrong. I dare you to try to prove anything that I've said wrong. Please be my guest and respond to this video and explain where I'm wrong. So some targeted individuals experience uh, what's called synthetic telepathy where they are literally get thoughts in their heads that aren't their own, which either come from a Gwyn Tower, capital G-W-E-N, um, satellite, uh, a mobile unit that has radio connectivity. The brain has no firewall, as Dr. Robert Duncan says, who created some of this technology. 
um, humans can be connected with. We're electric beings. We put off an energy, positive, negative energy, and you can be connected with. So there's synthetic tele telepathy. There's voice to skull, V2K they call it, or the voice of God, where a person where, will actually hear an audible voice in their head. Now, there were articles that came out about this being used in the Iraq War. The Marine Corps used it against um, some Iraq uh, combatants, told them this is Allah, lay down your weapons and disassemble them. The Marine Corps went in and zip-tied these guys because they used voice to skull uh, technology on an apparatus, uh, uh, something connected to a vehicle uh, with what's called active denial. It's like crowd disbursement technology. Um, then there's also something called remote neural monitoring where literally your thoughts can be read. Now, I know this sounds woo-woo or like ment a mental disorder just like you've been indoctrinated to react to. Just like the CIA created the term conspiracy theory in 1970, uh, 1967 when people started uh, asking questions about John F. Kennedy's murder. Um, they wanted to stigmatize it, kind of like aliens and ghosts and stuff like that. And to go, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, that's crazy. Um, they repeat over and over, oh, mental health, mental health, mental health, mental health, when there's no actual test to test somebody's mental health. Um, so there is this type of technology that they're using that I just explained. There are U.S. patents for every single one of these things I just talked about. You can look it all up. Why would there be a U.S. patent if there wasn't intent to use that technology with that patent? It costs money, time, effort to get a U.S. patent. Why would there be a U.S. patent if it was not planning on being used or being used? Um, what am I leaving out here? What am I leaving out? Okay, I think that's enough. That's been about 30 minutes. This was just a, an impromptu talk. I wanted to talk while I was driving. I took my daughter to work just now on my way home. I thought, you know what? I need to make a video. I was going to live stream, but uh, I just pushed record on my camera here. And um, I felt compelled to explain this to you all. And um, I feel like I'm leaving something out here. To put somebody on one of these targeting watch lists, I think there's several different ways that they could that they do it. Um, possibly through the FISA court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Um, just like if you watch the documentary, the plant, the plot against the president, uh, they explain a lot how the FISA court works and how it is abused. Uh, Department of Homeland Security and the FISA court have both been used to facilitate these illegal activities. Uh, the FISA court is the only court in the United States that does not afford a citizen due process. And that's our constitutional right as an American citizen to be afforded due process. So the FISA court should not even exist. There are other ways to um, target terrorists like Bill Binney. Uh, Bill Binney created a computer program called ThinThread. That could be used, but it wouldn't have generated as much federal income. So, uh, facilitated through the FISA court, it could be rubber stamped by 10 of the um, President Obama appointed judges at the FISA court through Department of Homeland Security. I think I'm just going to stop talking now. Um, this is probably one of the most important things that you can pay attention to, learn more about, research, vet the information that I'm giving you. Don't just believe what I'm saying. Do your own research. It's not that hard. Uh, on a part that I'm talking about, that you've, you're like, hey, I've never heard of that. Pause the video. Do some research. Do a Google search. Do a DuckDuckGo search. Everybody's being tracked everywhere. It doesn't fucking matter. All of your information is being tracked. There's so many people that are targeted. 
and you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid just to do some research so you can get the truth. But pause, pause this video. I'm sorry for my language, for those people that are offended by it. Um, pause the video, do your research, vet what I'm talking about, use your critical thinking skills. Don't use your everything is black and white, linear thinking, be a non-linear thinker. Use your critical thinking skills. Think past just what you're told. Think for yourself. Think past a few steps. Ask some questions. Process the information through your head. Sleep on it. Go back the next day. Process a little more. It's amazing how much you'll learn when you go through that process. All right, I'm really going to stop talking now. Thanks for uh, taking the time to listen to this. Again, please do your research. Literally, the, the freedom of our country and the rest of the world depends on um, a lot of these programs of control and social engineering taking place. Um, watch the interview with DJ Caravan to Midnight. Like I said, I'll post the link here. Watch my video about community policing, how Joe Biden explains community policing. See how those two link together. Um, and I might put a couple other links in, in here too, but for sure, watch those two. And, um, you know, be a citizen journalist. Be a citizen investigator. A lot of people in the intel agencies aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing because they're part of the deep state and they're blocking it. So we need to do this stuff on our own. Citizen journalists, citizen investigators. If, if somebody doesn't do it, you just got to DIY. Do it yourself, right? Um, there are citizen journalists that are falling off the map. They're being censored off of YouTube. Their constitutional uh, rights, their First Amendment rights, freedom of speech are being completely violated. Uh, which, furthermore, will tell you that we're living in a Nazi or Stasi Gestapo type environment right now where people are being censored. So, uh, you know, when one soldier falls, Another one has to stand up in their place and take their place. And even if you don't think that you could do something like that, you can. You can do anything you want to if you set your mind to it. Um, start doing your research. Hey, maybe start a YouTube channel. Start a bit shoot channel. Start um, brand new tube, I think is a new one. Apparently it's brand new. Um, you know, talk about this stuff on Twitter. Share it on Twitter. It might get a million views. You might get that dopamine rush. You know, you know you're... You're not getting um, and you'll feel like you're part of the team or not feel like you'll be part of the team you'll be part of the the reason the reason we regain our freedom I think I, I said that I'm gonna stop talking like three times now I think I really will now all right everybody thanks check these links have a great night or day morning wherever you are